Good morning and welcome back. Hello, it's lovely to see you. I've been enjoying watching your little hello chats while you've been waiting for us to start. So it's really, really lovely. I can see that we've got some people back who joined us on Tuesday and we've got some new subscribers as well. So hello, welcome back old friends and welcome to new friends. So my name is Nicole, I'm your teacher today and I work at Bright Idea Education and we are making a fantastic app that's not ready yet, unfortunately. So in the meantime, we want to offer you some live lessons. Our app should be ready in a few weeks time. So we're going to do some work together and we're going to do a quiz. So there's an online quiz to do that will be in the comments page, set comment section at the end. And also we'll post the link in the chat as well. So I know that some of you managed to do the quiz that I set for last time. Lots of questions I know, but I really wanted to practice those bonds up to 100. So today we're going to look at some reasoning. We're going to look at a little bit of subtraction, often one that is a poor relation to addition. And we're just going to get you to do some little bit of problem solving and investigation. I'm going to set you a problem to start with, and you can work on it during the lesson or you can work on it afterwards. Um, what some feedback we had was how can you make it a bit more challenging? So it's going to be more challenging today. Um, but it's really quite difficult to meet the needs of everybody because you're not my students in the classroom. So I don't really know where you are mathematically. What I would say is this is the third lesson of the day. So the other two lessons have looked at earlier stages of maths. So if there's anything that we cover today that you're not sure of, then please do watch one of the other two lessons um, that we've already posted today because it's really important you understand what you're doing. Maths can't be about feeling a bit unsure. Um, there is a, our exact answers and we need to be clear that we understand how we got to those answers. So it's really important that you have those underlying foundation skills. So while we're just warming up and signing in, let me just drop the screen down and show you the problem that I've set for you today. Just make sure that you can see that clearly. So we've got three identical rectangles. OK, so each one of these rectangles is exactly the same. And they're arranged to make the shape. What I want to know is what is the perimeter of the shape? What is the perimeter of the shape? So if you can take a screenshot, if you can do it, if you're on a laptop, you might just press print screen. If you're on an iPad, you can just do a screenshot or a phone, you can do a screenshot. We will actually send this out in an email as well later. So if you don't want to work on it now, but you'd like to work on it later, then that's absolutely fine. So let's get our brains thinking, what is the perimeter? Now you're going to have to really look carefully and you're going to have to do a little bit of thinking about how am I going to work out this distance? How am I going to work out this distance? Because not all of the distances are given to you. So you're going to have to look at them. OK, so good morning, people who are just joining us. Hello. Welcome back to old friends and welcome to new friends. We've just got a problem set to us to start our lesson off. So if you could take a screenshot of that. or a print screen. And as I said, if you find anything in the lesson too challenging, please do go back to our earlier lessons because they do cover maths leading up to this lesson. And I do try and watch the chat, but please tell me if I make a mistake. I'm trying to remember lots of things here. Um, and I did make a mistake in the earlier lesson, and I have to post out an apology for that. A mathematical error. It's always important to check our work. I had too many things to check, so I will go through that. So remember, we've got a quiz to do as well. So I'm going to lift the screen now. And as I said, if you've taken a screenshot of this or did a print screen and then copy and paste it into a Word document, we will email it out after the video so that you have the resource to work on and you can email your answer into us okay so that's a problem to keep you occupied 
if at any point in the lesson you find that what we're doing is too easy for you, then that's going to keep you a little bit occupied. So you've got something else that you can work on while we are busy. Some people have posted an answer. I haven't seen the answer that I worked it out to yet come in. So you just need to check through. And remember, of course, it will be centimeters. OK, so just check through. So I'm going to lift the screen now and I'm going to start on the rest of the lesson. Hello, hello again. So I'm just going to put this problem away and we will come back to think about that later. OK, so we're going to look at subtraction today and we're going to look at using an empty number line to help us with that. Before we go on to that, subtraction is often one where we can make silly mistakes. Um, before we go on to that, one of the other things that can happen with subtraction is sometimes we are not very familiar with all the vocabulary around that. Now, you are the oldest children. This is the hardest lesson I'm doing. So see if you can beat the earlier lessons in how many different ways we can use vocabulary to describe the operation of taking away, the operation of taking away. So we know that this is the subtraction sign in a nice little cloud here. So how many words? I've given you one. I'm going to start you off with takeaway. Let's see. I've got a pile of vocab here. How else can we say? Oh, we've got subtractions coming already. Oh. Yeah, so we can make, let me just open these up because they're all stuck together. I know I've got subtracting here. Okay, so subtraction is what we're looking at. So we can subtract. What other ones have we got? Take off. Yeah, we had that one earlier. Let's have decrease. Yeah, we had a lot of words around getting less. Because if you're going to decrease something, this is the maths operation you're doing. You are taking away minus. Well done. Minus is coming in there. Oh, difference. That's one the other two groups did not get straight away. I had to give them. And difference is a sneaky one and often causes a lot of problems. Decrease, we've got decrease, take away minus, find the difference yet. No share. If it was two people, you were going to split in half. No, share, not really, not, not one we come up with here. Deduct. Deduct, deduct, yep, had that one. Uh -huh -huh. Any more, any more, any more, take off. Delete, mm, no, not delete. Delete means take away altogether. So if you said delete seven, you would just get rid of it. So I suppose it is sort of like taking away, but it's getting rid of the whole thing. Leave if you, but you'd have to use something else with leave. Deduct, we've got take off, leave, remove. That's another one, remove. Haven't had that yet. Omit. That means you leave something out, not really take away. It means you don't do anything. Remove, deprive. Mm, that's a sad takeaway. Deprive seven of five. Oh, poor seven. But it, you would have to take away to do that. If you deprive a number of something, you have to take it away. So that's a new one. It's a sad one, a sad word. But it does mean, okay, going away. Seven is going away from nine. Yes, you could but it's not one we would readily use. So reduce seven without five. And what about this one? I don't think I saw that one coming up. Quite an easy one, less than. Seven gives away five. Hmm, we could say that because you do use that in word problems. If we said um, Nicole gives away five of her cupcakes, she started with 30, how many are left? Then you would have to do a takeaway, absolutely gives away. So that's another one. So just make sure, hopefully you've got a notebook or some paper and a pen with you there. Can you just make sure that you note down any new ones to you? Just make sure you note down any ones that are new that you hadn't heard of before, because it's really important um, that you don't get caught out with vocabulary. OK, so if somebody asks you a question and they say deduct this and you think, oh, I don't know what deduct means. But actually, you did know the maths. Just make sure you've got that. And less is one as well. So any new ones, just make a note of those. 
OK, just make a note of any new vocabulary to you. OK. I'm going to leave that a little bit longer, just a minute or so while I get the next page ready. OK, so we are going to do some empty number line work to help us with subtraction. We are going to do some empty number line work. So before we do that, let's just do another little brain teaser. I am going to drop the screen down okay, again so you can see what I've got here. Now I have a number line here. And I'm going to ask you, what is what number is arrow A? I'll put it at the top, actually. What number is arrow A pointing to? What number is arrow A pointing to? What number is arrow A? Now read the scale carefully. It's not in the middle of 140 and 150. So it's not going to be 145. It's not exactly in the middle. If you look carefully, I think you'll see that it's not exactly in the middle. So you need to read that scale carefully. So I would accept an answer of careful lookers of 141 or 142. Okay. So look carefully. Well done, well done, well done. OK, so let's try another one. So looking carefully now. OK, what number is arrow A pointing to now? What number is arrow A pointing to now? I would accept 41.5. What number is it pointing to now? So now it's a new number. Have a little look. I can see the answers coming in. And I can see a few people have lag in, so they just put in the answer to the previous one. Yep, I will accept 198 and 199. I think 197 is a little bit too far over, so I don't think I'd accept 197. So let's have a little look now. What are we pointing to now? 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 Can't see properly, okay, why is that? Why can't you see properly? We can move the camera down a little bit more. Hopefully that helps. Okay, hopefully that helps. Lots of people can see. Oh, thank you, it does help, good. Okay, what are we pointing to now? Yeah, I'll accept 100.5. Thank you. I'll accept 101. I'll accept 102 as well. Oh, thank you. And I'm glad that was better moving the camera down. OK, well done. OK, so on that theme of arrows and on that theme of keeping your brains ticking, let's have a look here. I might just fold that over at the bottom so I can just bring this down a little bit nearer. Let's have a look. So look carefully at the scales I'm showing you here. Can you look carefully at them? And what do you notice when you look carefully at them? What do you notice when you look carefully at them? What do you notice? It's important that you look carefully. OK, what do you notice? Somebody just sent an answer in for the perimeter. Still haven't seen the answer that I got. What do you notice? They're all in tens, yes? They're divided by ten. First one goes up in ones, exactly. First one goes up in ones. That's important. The first one goes up in ones. I cannot see. Why can't you see? Let's have a little look. We'll just try and put the light on it as well, see if that makes it a bit brighter. OK, so yes, they're going up in tens here, so they're not all the same, are they? 
they're not all the same scales so you need to be careful you need to be careful okay they're not all the same scales so let me just remove this number line from underneath as well so that doesn't confuse you in what you are looking at okay so if a is pointing here and b is pointing here where do i need to make c point where do i need to make c point if hmm. oh that's d let me put a back on there sorry because i said a and i put d on there if a is pointing there and I know the letters look upside down to you, but if I put them the other way, it looks a little bit confusing, gets in the way of the number line. Or I can try if you like. Let me just turn them around so you can see the numbers correctly. A is pointing there. And B is pointing there. If A plus B make C, where do I need to put arrow C to point? What number do I need to find on the last number line? If people are not watching um, this live, then obviously that makes it a little bit tricky to give your comments. But we'll give the answer. OK, let's have a little look. So let's just check. This goes up in ones. So this is pointing to three. This goes up in two. So this is pointing to 16, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So 3 and 16 equals 19. So the answer is 19. So the answer is 19. That's the answer. So I've got to find 19 on here. Now this goes up in fives. 5, 10, 15, 20. Well, it's not 20. So I've just got to put it before at 19. OK. Well done. So another one for you. OK, another one for you. I'm going to move there and I'm going to write it down so you can see. OK, I just write that in capitals. So can you solve this? for me please tell me what the value of c is tell me what the value of c is so c 2 times a plus 2 times b 2 times a plus 2 times b equals c so what does C come to? What does C come to? So let's have a little look. So let's so a is pointing to two. So two times two plus two times two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Two times fourteen equals. So that's the equation that we need to do to find the answer. 2 times 2 plus 2 times 14. 2 times 2 plus 2 times 14. So some of you just need to just check your arithmetic a little bit. 
So if we say two twos are four, four plus two fourteens, which is 28, four plus 28 equals 32. Okay. There's lots of little maths errors there, and now we're getting a little bit more accuracy, accuracy in there. Okay, so that one caught quite a few of you out quite a few of you out. Somebody asked me to do some algebra. So just think it through. Just think it through. Just think it through. Let's see if we can get a little bit more accurate. I'm going to write that again because that A is not very clear. Well, now I'm going to do three times A and I'm going to move these as well. So if write this down, please write this equation down. Three plus A plus two times B equals C, okay? So can you write that equation down? And then I'm gonna put the pointers on for you to see what the values are. So write that equation down for me. Write that equation down on your paper. So write it down, okay? There's marker A gone on. And there's marker, well, I'm going to put it there because otherwise it looks like it's in the way of marker B. So now fill in your unknowns. Three times A plus two times B. Okay. Just seen one answer that is correct. Two answers correct coming in. Ah, much better this time. Still a few little errors there, so just be careful. Okay. Okay, so let's have a little think. Three times A. Well, A is one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to have three fives plus two, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, plus two twelves, fifteen plus twenty-four equals thirty-nine. Okay. Just a little bit there to get your brains working. Some more brain work. That's what we like to keep our brains active so our teachers can feel really, really proud of us. I'm really proud of you. So well done. Yay, yay. And I've got something to show you today. Look, to show you how proud I hope this shows up. Let me see if it comes up through. Look. Yay. Can you see that? Yay. My daughter made that for us to use to say, well done. You were really, really hard. Good, 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 good. <laughs> well done, well done. Yay! So, if we do some more hard work, I might show that again. So, let's just look at some empty number line work. I'm just going to move that screen up and around a little bit so you can just see the board. Maybe I can move the board over as well. That's it. So, we're going to do some subtractions. Now, as I said earlier, it's quite difficult to get the level correct of where everybody is working. So, there are two different equations there, two different problems, sorry. So the, both of them are subtraction. One is to subtract 7, 375 from 1,505. And the other one is to subtract 5,602 from 5,675. Okay. So can you do those for me, please? But I want you to use an empty number line. Use an empty number line. Now, hopefully you have been doing this at school. Can you just let me know? Give me a thumbs up or a yes or a no. Are you used to using empty number lines to help you with subtraction? Make sure you're drinking lots of water. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna go through them. So 
If you don't want to listen to the red one, just carry on with your perimeter problems. I have not seen, I don't think, the correct answer come in yet. But I just want to show um, using an empty number line and how that can help us. So somebody put earlier on, when you're doing subtraction, you can go either way. And when you're using an empty number line to do subtraction, it's very helpful to count on, which I'm sure you know. So let's just draw an empty number line in here. So we are starting off from 375 and we are going all the way up to 1505. OK, that's where we are going up to all the way to 1505. So if we're going to count on, let's have a little look. I would, first of all, I would say for me, I'm going to add 25 and that's going to round me up to 400. Then I would say, right, I'm going to go to 500, add another 100, that's going to get me to 500. I know I need to get to 1500, so I'm going to add another five more. So I'm now going to do a jump and add five more, and there we are. I'm at my answer. What I now need to do is add all my jumps together. I need to add all my jumps together. So I'm going to just come down here and add them. And as I add them, I'm going to cross them off so I don't make mistakes. I'm going to start with my biggest number first. So I've got a thousand there. Then I've got a hundred. Use that. Then I've got 25. And then I've got five. I'm just going to double check. That I've used all of those. I now need 100. I know 25 and 5 is going to give me 30. So then I can add those together. 1130. Now, what math can I use to check that my answer is correct? Can you write the maths equation that I can use to check that this answer is correct? That 375 from 1505 is actually. 1130. Can you write the maths equation that I need to use to check that that answer is correct? The inverse, exactly. What is the inverse equation? What is the inverse equation I need to use to check that that is correct? So if I want to check, add in, that that is correct, I need to add my difference to what I took away to see if I get back to the original number. So I need to do an adding up, and I'm going to use the column method for that. And here I go. The ones come to five. That comes to ten tens. I can only keep nine in there, so it goes over ten tens to make a hundred. I've got 100, 4, and the one down there is 5, and then I've got 1,000. Double check. Yay, double check. Okay, double check. Yeah, double, double check. So make sure you are using an empty number line to help. You don't always have to do the column method. I haven't left much room for this one now. Let me see if I can fit that on another piece of paper here. So it was 5602. From 5675. 5602 here. And I have to get to 5675. There's my number line. Well, let me have a look where I'm going to round up to. Well, I would probably add 8. So I'm going to round that up to 10. So the jump of eight, then I know I've got five, six, ten. Oh, I haven't got that much to do. So now I'm going to round up to 70. I'm going to jump up to 70. So to get from 10 to 70, I need to add 60. And that's already going to jump me to 5,670. When I look at them, there's a difference of five. So I'm now, that was 60, I'm now going to add a five. And then that will jump me there. Now I need to add my jumps. Remember, start with the biggest number first. 
And when you've done so, cross it off. Plus eight, plus five, 60, plus, we know our bonds, 13, 60 and 13, really easy, 73. Okay, write the inverse equation for me. Write the inverse equation. Write the inverse add-in equation for me to check my answer. What do I need to do with 73? What do I need to add it to, to check that my subtraction was accurate? We only have about uh, two or three minutes left, so. Can you write the inverse addition equation for me? Oh, we've got lots of buffering. I'm so sorry. Okay, so I just need to check that 5,602, when you add 73, does in fact come to 5,675. So let's add the ones. There are five ones, there are seven tens, 600 and 5,000. Double check. Double check. Okay, so we are running out of time today. I've got another little problem to give you to make those brains hurt. Just going to drop it down. Can you see my weighing scales here? Yeah, can you see my weighing scales? Okay, so we have got a rectangle and two triangles, and all together they come to 900 kilograms. They balance that weighing scale at 900 kilograms. On the weighing scale underneath, there is just the rectangle, and alone, just the rectangle weighs 600 kilograms. Now, using that information that you have here, you know what the rectangle weighs. Can you tell me what is the weight in kilograms of each triangle? Okay, we know this. We can use the maths we know already. What is the weight in kilograms of each triangle? Not both of them, each triangle. Well done, the children who remember their units. Well done, remember the, your units. Put the kg on the end. Fantastic. Really good. No, and not decimals yet. Well done. Good thinking. Yay. I think your brains are nice and warm. Oh, where's my well done gone? Let's have a little look. See if it works down that way. My daughter will be very pleased to know we're using this. Let's have a look. Does it work? Does it work? Does it work? I'll give you a well done. Give you a well done. Give you a well done. Yay. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Yay. Okay. So I'm just going to remove this because the answer is 150. Just make sure that you know. So if this is 600, you know you've got 300 left because you know 600 of those kilograms is the weight of this rectangle. So you've got 300 left. So together, these triangles weigh 300 kilograms. So half of 300, as we know, easy peasy, my box is not big enough, is 150. Easy peasy. Half of that is 150. Okay. So I'm just going to cover the answer to the perimeter one. And I'm going to show you how I, my calculations for the perimeter. Okay. So we've got some people who are really experiencing lagging. OK, so we're just going to slow down a little bit just to make sure that people are. Oh, I'm having perimeter answers coming in. I'm having per I still have not. I might have seen earlier, but I still have not seen the answer that I've got. Oh, I have just seen the answer. I have just seen the answer. Somebody gave me an option, one or the other. <laughs> OK, right. So let's I can see that we're on to the program. I'm going to take this one away. And I'm just going to show you what I did to work out the perimeter one. Okay. So remember what we said we 
have three identical rectangles. Okay. So what you have to do is go around working out what's left. So for example, you know the length of this side is seven. So if two is there, five must be in this bit. So then for this one, you know that that's five. So that leaves two. You know the width of them all is three. When you have a full length, it's seven. So you can put all the threes in. It tells you this is 4.5 here. So you know 4.5, you need to add 2.5 to make seven. And then that leaves you 4.5 on the other side there. So that's how you work out all the outside. Remember the perimeter is the bit that if you are a person walking around here, this would be the perimeter. If this was a field, the perimeter is the outside edge. So once you have worked out what each of those edges measures, you then have to do very, very careful arithmetic, very careful adding up to add them. Now, now I'm seeing more things that I, more answers that are similar well, exactly the same to what I got. So I'm going to show you the answer that I got, which was 45. Now, if you didn't get 45, then you're going to need to look at it again. Check that you've worked out all these sides. Now, we are going to attach this to the email we send out afterwards. So if you didn't manage to screenshot and you'd like to have another little go, then please do. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me today. It has been so lovely to see some of the same people who were here last time and so lovely to see some new names. Please join us next Tuesday, same time, and do the quiz. Next week, we'll just look at subtraction a bit, do a few more reasoning problems, and then we'll just do a little bit on multiplication and division. And then we're going to look at sort of place value, just check that. And who knows, maybe we'll all be back out and back into school at the end of that. Maybe, we don't know. But if not, we'll be doing great things together. And please send us your feedback. Let us know if today um, was a little bit more engaging, was a little bit of a better level for you. Um, you know, it's been so lovely to spend time with you. I feel like I'm getting to know you as learners a little bit more, which is fantastic. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and then you won't miss any future broadcasts. Send us some feedback of how we could make the lessons more helpful. Um, please let us know if the level was a bit more challenging and you felt a bit more engaged at this time, because that would be really helpful for us to know. And if you have a little classroom set up at home, and, um, you know, you're making things, then do send us some pictures. Send us on the email. No pictures of you. We don't want to see what you look like, although I'm sure you are absolutely wonderful and beautiful and gorgeous. But for your safety. OK, then we have to keep safety, online safety. So no pictures of you, no personal details, please. But if you've got a little workbook, if you can show your workings out for the perimeter problem or any of the others, we'd really like to see them. So please send us in as attachments, send take some photographs of your work, keep your work together, can make sure you're doing all the work that your lovely teachers have sent you. It's been lovely to spend some time. Let's have a well done. My daughter worked hard on this, so let's, uh, yay, well done, everybody. Well done, well done, yay. <laughs> and I'll see you next Tuesday. Take care, everybody, and stay safe and well. Bye.